Hey, how you doing? How's it going, Jason? Real good. All right, so Michael T. Ross on the phone with me, and uh, what you been up to these days? I'm actually uh, tracking some cellos and piano for Terry Luz today because him and Pat Fontaine came over my place Friday night and said that they uh, needed me to do some tracks. So I've been doing that all weekend and finished today. You participate in the NAM uh, conferences this uh, in January? Yes, I I sure did. I represented a French keyboard company called Arturia, and I uh, was uh, on the main floor and next to Rudy Sarzo, the whole event. He was at the Sony booth right next to me. It was a lot of fun. So Arturia, those are basically the keyboards you use and all that stuff now? Well, I just signed on with them. Really, haven't used their keyboards on the road yet. I'm planning on using them with uh, missing persons. I have shows coming up, in a few weeks and I'm gonna the keyboard out and test it. So, what did you do with the Lita Ford album? You uh, did a lot of work on the her album, Wicked Wonderland. No, I was not no, I was not a part of her album. Uh, Greg Hampton, uh, who who produced it. So did the last Alice Cooper record and a few others, and he handled all the production of it. There, there's just a lot of uh, effects and uh, different kind of sounds and percussive sounds and a lot of different variations of uh, patches of keyboards, you would call it, that was used. But there wasn't actually any like uh, playing like for keyboards there was, there's no piano on the record there's not really much strings you know it's not like the record's very cutting edge you know, like Rob Zombie or Marilyn Manson or Trent Reznor there's like uh, arpeggiated going and you know, it's, it's it's a really good record I mean it's, I learned a lot off Greg I did go over to a studio of Magic Mountain and uh, spent the day with him and He's a gear junkie, so he's plugging in keyboard into a, a tube screamer to a, a phaser into like pedals and stuff, and he really does come up with some interesting sounds, and he utilized all all the, those techniques on the new Lita record. Now, did you go on tour with Lita at all? Yes. Uh, Lita, when she uh, came out of retirement in 2008, in June... Uh, I, I, I live in Los Angeles, and I flew immediately out to New York, uh, to Long Island, and I went to an audition. I, I didn't know it was an audition. Management called me, and basically I, I thought I had the gig. So I got there, and uh, there was, I believe, the keyboardist for Billy Squire, if I remember correctly. But anyways, we went through the audition, and um, I got the gig, and uh, Stead Howland, the drummer for... Right. Wasp all those years. He got the gig and a few other guys, and I, I've been hitting it hard on the road with Lee since. Two mm-hmm. years now. Two years. You're going to be working with her and right now, basically, when she tours? Well, our, my last show with Lita was October 8th. We played at Rockefeller Center in New York City, uh, live on the Sirius Radio Show. Right. In the Bowl. Uh, four songs. It was awesome, and was my last gig. She went out as a special guest with Queensryche, and she, uh, it wasn't the band. Uh, Queensryche was actually uh, the one playing Lita songs, so that was neat. I wasn't a part of that. Uh, Bumble, our guitar player, he went out with Roses right after that, and uh, he's he's still out now. I think they're playing in Ontario, Canada right now or something, and uh, I'm just doing other gigs right now. In the meantime, you know, it's winter. We we it's been out all year long, and uh, once we got the summer tour, the rest of us guys went off, did some other side projects. She did the Queen's Reich, getting geared for the next big tour. When do you foresee a new uh, Hardline album? A new Hardline album, probably not for a while, um, because we just released one in April of last year on Frontier Records, called Leaving the End Open. And that was uh, several years in the making. We did release uh, Hardline 2, I also played on. 
and we released that in 2002. Uh, so from 2002 to 2009, we probably won't see one for a while, but I'm I'm sure he's working on material now. He's always always working. I hope I hope we do one this year. <laughs> That'd be great. What was your collaboration with Lizzie Borden in 2007 on the new album? You did work with him. Yes, I, I do make myself available to special guests on several records. I'll play like one to three songs, and uh, that's that's how it was approached. I'm good friends with Martin Anderson, the bass player, and th thanks to him, he hooked me up. Uh, I found both of them in my uh, my apartment in Hollywood, uh, tracking a couple songs and. Just like uh, it happens sometimes, t uh, ten songs later, I'm on the entire record. So that worked out very well. Uh, there's a lot of keyboards on there. Uh, he was very keyboard friendly, and uh, it, w it was a great collaboration. I do not perform live with them. We've talked about it before. I've actually given them a, a two-minute keyboard intro disc. I believe they were, they were uh, running that at, like, Bang Your Head Festival and stuff. I do have two guitars, and it's more heavy metal. A uh, lot, um, so I've never performed with them, but I've done the record. It's a good record. Appointment with Death, 25-year Metal Blade Records anniversary. Like I said, I thought I was just going to play on a couple tracks, but it ended up uh, being the whole thing. Um, I just played on a track on the new Clean Axe record, um, "Sad Day on Planet Earth." Um, I wish I had more time. I, I. I I'm with Steve Blaze in the band as well, so that's how I got on that. Um, these records come and go really fast, and uh, I just like to get my name on on as many as I can, even if it's just one track. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I'm still part of the record, and and uh, I always special guest. To now, how many uh, albums you appeared on? I'd say probably about 25. I have about half of them are, are worldwide releases. Um, Atma and Noor drummer for the new Hardline record. He's done over 100 records, eight Richie Kotzen records. Been a, he's been a big inspiration to me. And I believe I'm, a, I'm on like three records with him. I'm, I play Josh Reyes, uh the guitar player for Hardline. I play on his uh, Living in the Light record. I'm going to play on that. And also um, we did a Christian rock record together. All the members of Hardline, except for Johnny, uh, this, uh, this really talented lady uh, up in San Francisco, uh, hired us and we did a record and then also hardline record so that's with Atma. yeah i just try to uh play with many guys as i can i live in hollywood i grew up here i got them right at my disposal i see richie Cotson walking around i see hanging out with marco mendoza here having lunch i can literally go to the market and get a gig hmm. like uh it is truly entertainment capital so we'll get a coffee at starbucks and the guys and try to get on the records that's a good deal <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> you know go to starbucks and get a deal on an album awesome stuff when you play yep you play with bobby rock <laughs> bobby rock yeah and i got confused because there's a bob rock um the producer yeah yes uh being here in uh the hollywood hollywood area uh bobby is stationed out burbank uh, he works at, uh, with the uh, Third Encore the rehearsal hall there. And when he joined Hardline and uh, with me in 2002, uh, we we got to work fairly close together. And we did one concert in Europe together. And uh, we did the Hardline 2 record, live DVD. And uh, actually, uh, two years ago, Bobby called me to work with Matthew and Nelson, uh, Matthew and Gunnar Nelson to do the Nelson reunion tour. And uh, I graciously did a meeting with Matthew in person. That weekend, Lita called me. Oh. And I love playing with women of rock. Just really, That's why I play with Del Bozio and Lita and stuff and uh, female artists. I really enjoy that. And uh, I've always dated women, musicians, and and uh, I support that. And so I had Matthew, but look, you know, I hope to work with you someday. I really like those guys. But I went with Lita. And here we are two years later. Nelson is working on a new record. 
Oh, and uh, they're with friends. And I saw Matthew and Gunnar at, at the NAM convention, and I asked him, I said, hey, can I play on your record? And he's like, oh, we got it covered. So you can't win them all. You can't play with everybody. There's so many great players out there I want to play with. Well, I'm sure in 2010 you'll find your share of recording projects. I'm... Absolutely. Got a few brewing right now. I do have Alan Dini. He's a, a guitarist from Croatia, Printini. And he is really, really awesome. And I played on his last uh, record. He's got a new one coming out. Just opened up for Richie Kinson in Croatia on a couple shows. He's making a lot of noise out there to be a part of his band. I want to get out there and play live with him, but I am recording his uh, second solo record. I also played on Alex DiRosso, a uh, guitar player. He was in Dokken, mm-hmm. out of Padova, Italy. I played on his last record, King of Balance. Uh, we played it. It was a Toto tribute record. There's a lot of great guitar players in uh, Western Europe that I'm uh, getting relationships with, and also Steve Saluto, who uh, I with that Nam, he came out from Italy and in La Familia, Atma Noor from Mendoza and Terry Deleuze, uh and Steve Saluto on guitar. I'm getting ready to do some tracks for him. Really great talent out there. And uh, even though I'm in LA and I live in the home bred full of guitar players that you would say, um, I do find myself getting most work out in Europe and uh I uh, I think about moving out there at times. Work for me out there. Wherever the gigs get you, this is a way to go. I Wherever guess. Wherever the gigs, I'll, I'll I'll go to Alaska if I have to. <laughs> Not to. <laughs> Alaska and but the I old cold Italy. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but and just to, well, just to to wrap up the question, I, I'm I'm really actually excited about working on my solo record right now. They always say you know save up the licks for your solo record and. It, it'll be my debut record myself, and I've spent the last, you know, good 12 years professionally playing uh, songs of other artists. They're pretty cool songs. I love playing, like, Close My Eyes Forever or Destination Unknown. Some of my classic songs that I grew up loving, and no problem playing them today, living. It's a blessing. But I really, really want to show uh, my position capability and my swing. Uh, Lita, Lita's gracious uh, with me on stage with real estate. We do like two to three minute solos each concert. I remember uh, playing at the Gods of Mo- opening up for Motley Crue uh, in June of last year, and Lita just really let me go off, especially on Kiss Me. I have like this minute long solo at the end. So, people to have great artists that, to work with that are keyboard friendly, but I really step it up on compositions. I, I do like Brad. I mean, I love Invey stuff and faster, like fat, like Gilbert or Michelangelo. I, I've been told great players that it's the fastest keyboard playing that they've ever heard. I really love Tony McIntyre and I love I love shredding, like ultra shred. This record's really going to shine in that fashion and, and that's what I'm working on right now.